Why do we obey authority even when it's not in our own interests to do so? Why do we sometimes submit to the will of the tyrant, the one who enslaves and abuses us, uh, even though without our obedience, his power would be nothing? So asked the French humanist scholar Etienne de la Boissy in the middle of the 16th century. And in asking the seemingly naive and simple question, the question of why we obey, he opened up, I think, one of the fundamental enigmas of politics, which is that of voluntary obedience or voluntary servitude. So this seminal text that he wrote in 1549, Discourse de la Servitude Voluntaire, or Discourse and Voluntary Servitude, I think really opens up quite fundamental questions uh, about our obedience to authority. Uh, it also, I think, raises some uh, very interesting uh, and very serious um, ethical and political questions for anarchism, because anarchism, or at least classical anarchism, the anarchism of the 19th century, assumes that man desires freedom, that we uh, as individuals have a kind of a natural predis predisposition towards freedom. We desire freedom, we seek freedom, uh, and yet because of the external constraints imposed by the state and its coercive violence and because of the forces of the law and these various kinds of external restrictions, our quest for freedom is at some level hampered or restricted. I think what Le Boissy uh, does is to suggest that this might be a more fundamental problem, that at some level we might actually desire our own domination, our own servitude, our own enslavement, that we may not necessarily want to be free, that we might have actually abandoned the will to be free. So he suggests that the problem might actually be inside of us rather than outside of us. So um, I think it's worthwhile um, considering some of the, the questions which Le Boissy raises in this very interesting text. He says that our obedience to authority is not the result of cowardice because the tyrant, after all, is only one man uh, and he cannot possibly alone uh, and cannot possibly, uh, through the use of violence, dominate a whole mass of individuals, a whole of society. No, the, the problem uh, or the, the question, I think, is more for him at least, is more fundamental. It's the fact that we voluntarily submit to his power and in doing so actually constitute his power, right? So in a way and paradoxically, obedience comes before power. We don't obey because there is power. There is power because we obey. Um, now, Le Boissy suggests actually that we do in, in our natural state, we do indeed desire freedom, but somewhere along the line, and for some reason which he doesn't quite explain, this desire for freedom becomes perverted into a desire for our own domination. He offers a number of different explanations for this. He suggests that we become habituated into servitude. We simply become used to obeying, and we forget that we were ever once free. He points also to the propagandistic dimension of power, the way that power lulls us into a stupor through its uh, various displays um, of grandeur. He refers to plays, farces, spectacles, strange beasts, the various kinds. Of, it's what uh, I suppose um, Guy Debord today would call the society of the spectacle. And we need to think about the way in which the ideological spectacles of capitalism kind of lull us into a sort of a slumber whereby we forget our own will to be free. And also he points to a third explanation, which is the fact that the tyrant creates around him a kind of an ecosystem of dependencies um, in, into which we all kind of slot ourselves, a strange pyramid of power, um, whereby to seek a place within this power structure, we sacrifice and immolate our own freedom. Now, the question is, where does this actually leave us? There's two different ways of interpreting this. There's the kind of the pessimistic and conservative interpretation, voluntary servitude, which is to say that, well, uh, we are simply destined to obey, and that's really all there is to it. But I think um, uh, the, the true message of Le Boissy is kind of an emancipatory one, which is to say, firstly, that if power is simply sustained by our obedience, then power, in a way, is an illusion. Power is nothing. Power does not actually exist. Power only exists because we obey it. Power only exists, power only exists because we voluntarily participate in it and in doing so actually create power in the first place. Uh, and what this does is actually introduce a kind of a fundamental ontological instability into the very foundations of power. 
So what Lavoisier suggests is that if we simply resolve to be free, if we simply reclaim our will to be free, then power, the illusion of power simply disappears. The hold that power has over us simply vanishes. He says, resolve to serve no more and you're at once freed. I do not ask that you place hands upon the tyrant to topple him over, but simply that you no long, simply that you support him no longer and, and you will behold him like a great colossus whose pedestal has been pulled away, full of his own weight and break into pieces. So for him, uh, the way to free ourselves from power is to simply is to not necessarily have to engage in kind of a violent re- uh, revolution whereby we, through force of arms, topple power, but something much more simple, which is to simply turn our backs away from power, turn our gaze away from the false illusion of power, and to look at one another and to rediscover our original bonds of freedom and equality. And if this isn't a recipe for anarchism, I don't know what is. Thank you very much.